Back in the 19th century, scientists believed light needed a medium to travel through, just like sound needs air. This invisible medium was called luminiferous ether. Imagine it as an all-pervading, undetectable substance filling the universe, enabling light to move even through the vacuum of space. Well, the idea seemed necessary because light, being a wave, should need something to wave through. Without ether, how could light travel through the empty void of space? But this ether had to be special, infinitely spread out, invisible, and without any interaction with physical objects. Quite the mystery. Everything changed with the Michelson-Morley experiment in 1887. These brilliant scientists set out to detect the ether by measuring the speed of light in different directions. To everyone's surprise, they found no difference at all. It was like trying to find wind without feeling any breeze. This null result suggested that maybe, just maybe, ether didn't exist. As more experiments throughout the early 20th century confirmed these findings, scientists faced a dilemma. If there's no ether, how does light travel through space? This once-believed medium was ultimately put to rest by the groundbreaking work of Albert Einstein and his special theory of relativity. In the early 20th century, the scientific community faced a turning point. Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity, introduced in 1905, fundamentally altered our understanding of space and time. Unlike previous theories, which relied on the existence of ether, Einstein proposed that the laws of physics should be consistent and independent of any such hypothetical medium. Einstein's theory built upon the mathematics of Lorentzian electrodynamics. He demonstrated that the Lorentz transformation, essential for Maxwell's equations, also applied to the fundamental relationships between space and time coordinates in inertial frames of reference. This meant that not only were the laws of physics invariant, but so was the speed of light, a revolutionary concept at the time. Max Planck, a prominent physicist, quickly supported Einstein's theory. Alongside the elegant mathematical formulation by Hermann Minkowski, this advocacy accelerated the acceptance of special relativity among scientists. The need for a single universal frame of reference vanished, and with it, the ether theory faded into obscurity. Einstein's insights extended beyond relativity. In the same year, he addressed the photoelectric effect, showing that light could be considered as particles with wave-like properties. This dual nature of light further discredited the necessity of ether, paving the way for the development of quantum mechanics. Interestingly, even with the rise of relativity, some scientists like Hendrik Lorentz continued to use the ether hypothesis. Lorentz argued that electromagnetic fields and energy existed independently of the ether's conceptual framework. However, he acknowledged that the theory of relativity could be applied regardless of one's stance on ether. In 1920, Einstein revisited the concept of ether in a lecture at Leiden University. He suggested that while special relativity didn't require ether, the general theory of relativity implied that space itself had physical qualities akin to an ether. This nuanced view showed that while the traditional ether was no longer needed, the idea of space having properties wasn't entirely abandoned. When Einstein was still a student at the Zurich Polytechnic in 1900, he was fascinated by the concept of ether. His initial research proposal aimed to measure the Earth's velocity through this hypothetical medium. Einstein believed that the velocity of a wave depended on the elastic forces causing its propagation and the mass of the ether moved by these forces. Fast forward to 1916, when Einstein had completed his groundbreaking work on general relativity. Hendrik Lorentz, a prominent physicist of the time, speculated that general relativity might reintroduce the concept of ether. Einstein responded, acknowledging that one could speak about a new ether, but emphasized that this ether could not be associated with motion. By 1918, Einstein began publicly discussing this new definition. In the early 1920s, he was invited to give a lecture at Lawrence's University in Leiden, where he sought to reconcile relativity with Lorentzian ether. Einstein clarified that special relativity removed the last mechanical property of the ether, its immobility. However, he argued that special relativity didn't necessarily rule out the ether, as it could give physical reality to acceleration and rotation. In 1924, Einstein published a paper titled, Concerning the Ether, where he argued that Newton's concept of absolute space was akin to an ether of mechanics. He extended this analogy to Maxwell and Lorentz's electromagnetic theories, suggesting an ether of electrodynamics. Within special relativity, acceleration remained absolute. 
but the ether concept evolved into a four-dimensional framework, as simultaneous states at different locations could no longer be defined absolutely. Einstein's views on the ether continued to evolve. He explained that the ether of general relativity was not absolute because matter influenced the ether, just as the ether influenced matter. This marked a significant departure from classical ether models, where the ether was absolute and unaffected by matter. Notably, Einstein's use of the term ether found little support in the scientific community and played no role in the further development of modern physics. Yet his exploration of the concept demonstrates the fluidity of scientific paradigms and the relentless pursuit of understanding the universe. As historians like John Stachel argue, Einstein's views on the new ether weren't in conflict with his earlier abandonment of the ether concept in 1905. For Einstein, the new ether represented physical properties in space without attributing substance or motion to it. Now turn our attention to the criticisms and alternative theories that have emerged in response to the dismissal of the luminiferous ether theory. While Einstein's theories of special and general relativity redefined our understanding of space and time, not everyone in the scientific community was ready to abandon the concept of ether. One notable critic was the French physicist Paul Dirac, who in the 1950s proposed a new form of ether to explain the vacuum of space. Dirac suggested that the vacuum might be filled with particles and antiparticles, constantly appearing and annihilating each other, creating a sea that could be considered a modern form of ether. This idea, known as the Dirac Sea, sparked significant debate and further investigations into the nature of the vacuum. Additionally, some proponents of quantum field theory argue that the vacuum is not empty, but filled with fluctuating fields and virtual particles. These fields provide a framework for understanding the forces and particles that make up the universe, echoing the idea of a medium through which interactions occur, albeit in a form vastly different from the classical ether. Moreover, there are theories in cosmology such as the concept of dark energy, which some speculate might be related to an ether-like substance. Dark energy is believed to be responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe and understanding its nature could potentially revive discussions about an all-pervading medium. Critics of the ether theory's dismissal also point to the limitations of current scientific models. They argue that while relativity and quantum mechanics have provided powerful tools for understanding the universe, these theories are not yet unified. The search for a theory of everything which would reconcile general relativity with quantum mechanics remains one of the biggest challenges in physics. In light of these ongoing debates it's clear that the story of luminiferous ether is far from over. The scientific method thrives on questioning and re-evaluating conclusions, and as our understanding of the universe evolves, so too does our perspective on concepts like ether. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of the continued questioning and alternative theories surrounding the ether.